So, I've been playing Princess Peach Showtime for the Nintendo Switch, and I just want to talk about it. What an interesting position we're in right now. Really, when you, when you sit back and look at it, is this going to be the final original game on the Nintendo Switch? We got some remakes down the pipeline, which, you know, that's very cool and exciting, obviously, especially in the case of Paper Mario. But hey, a brand new Princess Peach game by Goodfeel, honestly, one of my favorite developers that Nintendo has under them. And uh, yeah, it's... It's it's an inter it's an interesting game. I think it's important to go into this game with the the context that many of us had before the game really came out, and uh, we didn't really know what this was gonna be when they initially showed it off. It was like, okay, it's a Peach game, it's a side scroller. Uh, we don't we don't know what's happening, and then eventually there's costumes. Okay, so there's variety in terms of what they, what they're doing, but. It, I didn't know what we were going to be doing, and then it was finally the game overview trailer where things started to click, and then I played the game. It's not that long. It took me just a couple hours, really, to, to get through, to get to the credits, and then I got through it, and I'm like, okay, I see what they were going for now, and it's, it's fun. It's a fun, cute video game. That's basically exactly what I said when the credits rolled. The premise is pretty simple. Peach wants to go to the show. She has a bunch of toads with her. Seems like it's gonna be a grand old time. She gets to the stage and then, hey, uh oh, something bad's gonna happen. The, the lights go dark. And then out of nowhere, out of this mysterious puffy purple smoke comes Grape and the Sour Bunch, which by the way, the name Grape uh, against Peach, brilliant. Love her design too, by the way. This like, weird witch there's not really much of a body to her almost rayman-esque like i actually really love her design and regardless of however you think this game is i really hope that grape returns in the future the idea of these mario characters having their own side games and then they come with their own unique villains that only show up in their games like i love that uh i guess king boo shows up in multiple games but evil king boo with the dark eyes only shows up in mansion we got Captain Syrup in the Wario games, we got Grape now in the Peach games. I hope this continues going forward. That's just getting it out of the way. This new cute little character, Stella, comes out to say, oh, things are going wrong across all of these different plays, and only you can save them. And you don't have a crown. That, that was also taken from you, so now you don't have royalty. Oh no, this is a real conundrum. And then the game starts off, and dare I say, this almost has like a Crash Bandicoot 2 and 3 like structure. There are multiple worlds here that all take place on different floors, and each floor has four different doors that you can go to that lead to different levels, and each level has a radically different playstyle. And the playstyles come in the form of 10 different outfits that Peach gets to don. You got the sword fighter, where you can do some close combat with your sword, you got the detective one, which is more slow paced, and you gotta solve some mysteries. Patisserie Peach, or Patissiere, I'm actually not sure how to say that word, but it's the one where you can design cakes and you make cookies and stuff, that's very cute. There's Kung Fu, which has more close combat, but now with like a China theme. Then you got the Ninja one, which is kind of cool. To be fair, you do get some close combat here as well, but there's more stealth stuff that you can do, as well as there's some cool set pieces that go on with the Ninja aesthetic. I actually really like these ones. The Cowgirl one, you get this lasso where you can take things and then chuck them at other things. I, that was really fun. The figure skating one is more movement based and free flowing. You got to time your jumps and your spins and you got to mess with some enemies along the way. This was uh, this was nice. This one just felt nice to, to play through. The dashing thief was really cool because you get to move really quickly and do these cool set pieces where you're trying to avoid being detected by like these robotic little enemies. And I liked that a whole lot. The mermaid was also slower paced and you're guiding these golden fish to like open up treasure chests and solve some more mysteries and this this one not that great, but Peach does have good pipes. She can sing uh, quite quite beautifully, actually. And lastly, Mighty, where you turn into this robot, basically. You can lift giant things and chuck those giant things with massive force. You can fly through the air in these shooter segments. It was pretty cool. And the way all these playstyles fit in the typical progression of the game is that all the floors, you start off really quick with the first level of these outfits, where they introduce things. You play as Peach first off. You got this ability where you can like spin your ribbon around and take care of some enemies. And then you learn the basic idea of the plot of this playstyle. Like, oh no, things are going awry and only you are good enough to don this outfit and save the day. So you play as Peach a little bit and then you get the outfit and you get the introduction of how that outfit works. Bing, bang, boom, pretty simple. You may have a boss fight, you may not. There's like no consistency really at all, uh, which is both a good and a bad thing because it doesn't really have much of an identity like the game in general. There's just no consistency with that. However, the variety is on point. So 
that was cool. I was compelled to go and see what the next level was gonna bring because it's not like you're doing one level and then immediately doing the second level of that outfit. You never do the same play style two times in a row. So, you know, that, that part was cool. But when you eventually get to the second level of that play style, things ramp up a little bit you start off as the play style in question like you the time you actually get to play as peach herself as normal peach is pretty minimal and it's not even so much that the second levels really amp up the difficulty at all you kind of just do more of it for a bit longer of a time and exploration sort of goes up a little bit because each level has a bunch of these little sparkly gems to collect. There's a hidden guy that gives you a ribbon that sometimes is more hidden than others, but exploration, you know, is a core focus of this game. So that part is fun, uh, but you know, it doesn't really ramp up in difficulty. You just get to play as them again. And then eventually there is a third level with each of these characters where you get to find the sage, like the main character that your outfit is based on. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Each play style has three levels that you can go through that, you know, again, variety is really fun, uh, but there's there's a lot of downsides that come with this play style. Like, I'll just be honest. To knock off, like, really quick some of the downsides that people have with this game that I feel like are unwarranted. First off, the performance. For some reason, people are really saying that, like, oh man, this game is really poorly optimized for the Switch. That I don't really agree with. Like, yeah, the resolution, it, it, I guess there are times where it does seem a little bit blurrier than it should be and the frame rate specifically during the loading times is pretty bad but like other otherwise it's fine i just i've seen some people say the performance is like really bad in this game and i don't understand it like it's it's fine it runs fine obviously it could be better but i i think pokemon has just really traumatized people when it comes to switch performance but <laughs> no this is fine and then another thing that i think should just be squashed right off the bat is a lot of people are comparing this to balan wonderworld saying that this is Nintendo's Battle and Wonderworld because of the stage aesthetic. Uh, no, uh, that that immediately paints like a terrible negative light on this game in there. Oh, boy, no, don't you don't you dare say Balan's name in this kind of company because this this game is way better than that. People with culture, by the way, would immediately say that this is not like Battle and Wonderworld. This is more like Nintendo's Puppeteer, which is an incredibly underrated game that Sony put out. Like nobody played it, but that was a 2D side-scrolling stage play based platformer. And this shares a lot more DNA with that than Balan. So let's just get that out of the way. All right, no more Balan talk this episode. But the real negatives that I think really like are emphasized with this game is that it is fun. It, you know, it, it's fun to explore and the play styles are nice and you know, it's just a charming adventure, but the difficulty, non-existent. It's just, it's not a difficult game. You are basically having your hand held the entire time. You're just being shown these cool ideas that Goodfield came up with and rarely, if ever, are being challenged with the, the controls and the styles that you're being presented. Like, even though there is like a final challenge level for each play style and aesthetically, it's all cool. Uh, you just, you're not being challenged at all. So just get that out of your head. There's no challenge. This is very clearly for younger gamers, which is fine because sometimes it's good to have a game that is just all about doing cool things and not about challenging you. But yeah, just know that going, going right into it. And then the length is also not very long, like at all. It takes a few hours to go through. I think it ultimately it took me six, maybe seven hours to run through. A lot of that was uh, kind of cutscene and and just seeing the world and just taking it all in because I I think ultimately in terms of actual playable content, God maybe like four or five hours of stuff. Uh, it's a it's a weird it's a weird game. But people who have played good feel games in the past, this is kind of on par for what they tend to go for with their games. Like, if you look at their track record, Wario Land Shake It, Yoshi's Woolly World, uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn, uh, Yoshi's Crafted World, I mean, I guess outside of Woolly World, which does have its really challenging moments, all of the games tend to focus on having really cool aesthetics, and they're very easy because they just want to have all of these creative ideas, and they want the player to experience as much of it as possible. It may not have, like, a quirky, unique art style like the previous Good Feel games have, but in terms of really taking advantage of the stage aesthetic, then yeah, this game does that because you have a stage light on you the whole time and this curtain's, you know, closing in front of you all the time. There are sometimes the stage is 3D and they really make that a focus of what you're doing. 
Uh, sometimes like bosses will show up and if you're the cowgirl, a horse will show up and you can see the strings attached to them. Uh, it's all, it's all just very cool looking. And I think the best part about this game, honestly, are the boss fights because the bosses are way better than they have any right to be. They, they, they take a lot more thought than you would initially think. They're, they're more puzzle focused in terms of timing when you need to hit them. But I actually really enjoyed these. Like they, they could have gone for this thing where they just gave a boss fight to most, if not all of the different play styles. But instead you do play as just normal Peach during these and uh, getting to actually figure out the bosses. I did take some damage every so often. I, I liked these. These were really fun to figure out, but that does kind of lead to another downside with this is chances are you are not gonna really perfect everything in this game your first time through. So when it comes to figuring out bosses without taking damage, likely not gonna happen because it's gonna you're gonna figure out some some beginner's traps along the way. And then throughout the stages, uh, of course, it keeps track of all of the things that you collect. And there are more chances than not that you're gonna miss one or two things, not just for, you know, not seeing them as you're walking by, but by being locked out of going back to the area that you were just in. So there, there, there were so many times I got to a point in the stage where I was like, oh, I know I just missed something and I can't go back. Luckily, I guess they do have an incentive for you to go back through basically the entire game. Once you beat the game once, a new feature gets added that does throw some more collectibles into every single stage, like every single one. This is another thing that uh, Goodfield did with Yoshi's Crafted World, where they really wanted to just hammer home like, yeah, the game is not that long, but damn it, if you want to put your time in, we're going to give you a lot of things to do. Is that good? I don't know, but I beat the game once and uh, all you really get for all the collectibles is a bunch of new costumes for yourself as well as Stella, uh, which is kind of strange. Like you get a bunch of costumes for Peach's main dress and you spend the bulk of the game not in the dress. So like it's it's cool, but I would have really loved for more aesthetics for the different outfits for all the different play styles like that would have been so much better. And they also clearly show that there is opportunity for some challenge with this game because you unlock some end game challenges too for some of the costumes and like those are cool and then I did those and that was it. It was it was just for a couple more different collectibles and then and then we moved on. And now real quick a little bit of a spoiler section. There's not a whole lot to talk about when it comes to the end game, but I do want to mention it because you know what? It it was kind of cool. But if you really care about the spoilers of a game like this, then you can just you can just skip ahead. That's fine. The whole final few levels of the game where you have to spend most of your time in the basement saving all of the sages, like every single one of them, like okay, I can kind of see where they're going to go with this when it comes to the whole final segment and sure enough, you save all 10 of them, which by the way, once again, those interactions kind of cool. Some of my favorite parts of the entire game were just seeing you in the outfit that you mastered with the person who the outfit's like kind of based on. That's kind of cool. A lot of action shots there. A lot of times I press the screenshot button on the switch. Like that stuff. And then, hey, look at that. The real superpower of friendship comes into full effect and you get to take out Grape in glorious fashion in, uh, dare I say, like a, a supersonic styled final boss. You, you get you get Peach in a very glorious outfit, the Radiant outfit. She does look fabulous, I'll give you that. And then it feels like the way that old 2000s and early 2010s Sonic games would end with their boss fights, like it, it almost kind of gives off that vibe. Super simplistic, super flashy, but it, it was kind of cool. And then you take out Grape and then, oh, look at that, Grape's actually alive and a giant monster. I feel like if I was five, this would actually terrify me. And I mainly wanted to mention this part because uh, once again, it's bizarre to me just how many times Nintendo has used this floating head with two hands as a boss. Like, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. We've all accepted this. Nintendo does it a whole lot, but even Princess Peach, this, this whole brand new game is not safe from it and uh, just, just give it a little bit of time for like the spoiler window to close and people are talking about this more openly, but this is gonna join the ranks of all the other ones. Nintendo can't help themselves, but it's a tried and true method. It's cool. And then uh, you save the you save the stadium, you save the plays, Peach is happy, gets her crown back. Yay. I feel like I'm talking all over the place about this game and I feel like I'm sounding more negative than I than I really intend to because at the end of the day I do enjoy this game. This is a fine enough game that does establish Peach more as 
like this is like a more of a platform that they could build off of if they want to do more Peach games in the future. It's certainly not like Super Princess Peach on the DS that felt like it was really just capturing a lot of Mario and Yoshi's Island DNA and then throwing in an emotion gimmick and then and like that was it, calling it a day. Like this does feel unique from any other Mario side series game that they've done before. And it is a good use of Good Feels talents. But part of it does just come off as like a variety showcase first and foremost before being just like a really good and solid video game. Like this is fun. This is a fun like uh, seven out of 10, maybe a six out of 10. Uh, and then we just kind of call it a day. Like I wish I had more stuff to talk about. I was, I was, I was figuring to myself like how much can I really say about this? And there's really not much. Like the variety is cool. I was very interested in seeing what the next level was gonna be throughout the entire game. But when I got all done with it, I was like, okay, that that was a game. That was, if there was a Princess Peach game, that was there. That was it. And I, I you know, the Thetes are really cool. Love these little guys because they kind of just look like Captain Olimar without the helmet. So I love that. I think the new villains, I, I I don't even know what they're called. They didn't really ever say their name, but the Sour Bunch. I don't know if the little guys have their own unique names, but the Sour Bunch. They're cool looking. Grape is cool looking. The game looks fantastic. I th I think that like in terms of variety. Uh, I, and just the general aesthetics. I love how this game looks. And like Mario and Luigi, like they don't show up in the game at all. This is just Peach, you know, completely from start to finish. There's no Bowser. This is her own thing. And uh, I don't know, maybe it, I, part of this could be that I did play this game at a good time. Like I just got through playing Persona 3 Reload, which is people who know, it's a lot more of an intense game. So having something that was more lighthearted like this, it came in at the perfect time. But yeah, I just, it's hard to really formulate my thoughts in something that is cohesive because the game itself is not really cohesive. It's just, it's just a variety showcase for like six to seven hours with Peach as the focus. And it's fun. It is incredibly charming. I think younger gamers are going to adore this. If you're someone like me who likes the lighthearted romp every so often, then you're also going to get some enjoyment out of this. Um, if you're also someone like me who just loves good feel the developer and their track record and are interested in what you know they've been up to because they also did that goemon game that no one really got to play and because it's japan only but like i just played that as well uh it, this it, that, you know it was important for me to keep up with what good feels doing yeah that's that's it man it's a strange game if this is the final game like the final original game nintendo puts out for the switch you know it it, it makes sense it makes sense to me. It is something that is really no risk to them. It was just, they had a, a cool, unique idea that they just pumped out there. And uh, now we move on. And I'm just, I'm hopeful for another Peach game in the future that really expands on some of this stuff because this really just feels like a template for the future. And I'm excited for what Goodfield works on in the future as well because they still don't have a dud, really. It's a weird, it's, it's a weird game. This felt like a nonsensical rant for like 20 minutes, but let me know if you played the game down in the comments below. Let me know what you guys thought, because this just felt like one of the Peach games of all time, which there's only been two of them. So, I mean, that statement is absolutely, that's an objective truth.